name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. One day, a sister of the Society of the Sacred Heart of Jesus was working at her sewing machine. The sister, unknown to everyone but two of her immediate superiors in the convent, had been visited by our Lord, who asked her to suffer in an unusual manner for souls. She was given the pain of our Lord's crown of thorns. She felt the heavy weight of his cross for hours at a time. She also felt the nails of our Lord's uh, crucifixion in her own hands and her own feet and she felt the wound in our Lord's side and finally on over 100 occasions this sister experienced the torments of hell often for hours at a time having to listen to the curses and blasphemies of the damned all this she suffered to make reparation for those sinners who were not yet condemned to that place as a sacrifice to save souls from going there. So while she was working at her sewing machine, she was reflecting on these things, and she was wondering how much of this could she endure. Every night she was being taken down to hell and enduring these sufferings. She had the crown of thorns and all these other sufferings, whilst having to do her everyday work. None of the other sisters, while she lived, other than her two superiors, knew that this ever went on. While she was working, Our Lady suddenly appeared before her. Our Lady told her, Yes, child, you can, do, you can do still more. You are suffering for souls and to comfort Jesus. Our Lady picked up her rosary, which was sitting at the sewing table. She touched it three times to her veil, and then Our Lady disappeared. Later on, the sister found out that where Our Lady had touched her veil three times, Three drops of blood appeared on the veil. She found out that that was indeed our Lord's blood. This gift of the drops of blood was repeated on two other occasions, and um, two of these blood-stained veils are still kept with the Society of the Sacred Heart. Also, after several of her descents into hell to make reparation, just as the sister regained consciousness, it was sort of like a bilocation, she would, her body would just go limp, and sometimes right in the arms of the, uh, her superiors, her two, the two mothers that were uh, head of that convent. As she returned, on ten occasions, as a proof for what she was enduring, her clothes even caught fire. Ten of these uh, uh, charred garments are still preserved, from these ten instances where her clothes caught fire as inexplicably before the astonished eyes of her uh, superiors as she returned from these torments, these torments to make reparation. So these relics were left behind. They are left behind as a proof of the authenticity of the supernatural visitations that this sister had from heaven. Visions which have received the all-important and necessary approval by the church before they can be promoted. However, these proofs are not meant so much to point to this sister's life, the sister whose name was Sister Josefa Menendez. They're rather meant to point to the message that she received from the Lord himself. You see, our Lord chose Sister Josefa to relay a message to the world. This happened in the 1920s. It was a message that he actually dictated to her himself while she stood there, while she knelt there rather, with a pen in hand and wrote down his words, word for word. These are compiled in a book called The Way of Divine Love. It's this message to the world given in the 1920s but so little known today that I'll relay to you, at least in part, this message is Christ's appeal for love. These are our blessed Lord's words. Quote, the measure of my love and mercy for fallen souls is limitless. I want to forgive them. It rests me to forgive. 
I am ever there waiting with boundless love till souls come to me. Let them come, nor be discouraged. Let them fearlessly throw themselves into my arms. I am their father. Our Lord went on. I know the very depths of souls, their passions, their attraction for the world and its pleasures. I have known from all eternity how many of them will fill my heart with bitterness, and that for a great number, both my sufferings and my blood will be in vain. But having loved them, I love them still. My heart is not so much wounded by sin as torn with grief that they will not take refuge with me after it. I want to forgive. I want the world to know through my chosen ones that my heart is overflowing with love and mercy and is waiting for sinners. Close quote. Our Lord spoke other things to Sister Josefa. In one instance, he referred especially to his chosen souls. What he meant there were those souls that were victim souls, those souls, uh, especially religious and priests, that had given their lives, giving up their own lives, their own preferences, for the sake of those that they want to try and help save. Speaking of one of his chosen souls, a religious who at the time was offending our Lord, our Lord said, quote, do my chosen souls know of what treasure they deprive themselves and others when they are ungenerous? I do not say by the fact of my, cho my choice, that is, his having chosen a soul to be a religious or priest, I do not say by the fact of my choice that a soul is freed from her faults and wretchedness. That soul may and will fall often again. But if she humbles herself, if she recognizes her nothingness, if she tries to repair her faults by little acts of generosity and love, if she confides and surrenders herself once more to my heart, she gives me more glory and can do more good to other souls than if she had never fallen. Miseries and weaknesses are of no consequence. What I do ask of them is love. Yes, in spite of its miseries, a soul can love me to folly. But, Josefa, you must realize that I am speaking only of faults of frailty and inadvertence, not of willed sin or voluntary infidelity. Close quote. You see, willed sin or willed faults are a total obstacle to the spiritual life. We are not going to grow in the spiritual life if we willfully commit faults, if we willfully commit even venial sins, willfully not like accidentally someone surprises us kind of thing, but we just, I know this is wrong, but I'm going to do it anyway. We can't grow in the spiritual life. We might not lose the state of grace by a venial, willful venial sin. We won't lose the state of grace by a willful venial sin. But we won't grow in holiness. So we need to take advantage of those opportunities. Our Lord went on, I am all love. My heart is an abyss of love. It was love that made man and all existing things that they might be at his service. It was love that moved the Father to give his Son for man's salvation, which through his own fault he had lost. It was love that made me embrace all the miseries of human nature, for the love of my heart saw far ahead. I knew how many imperiled souls would be helped by the acts and sacrifices of others, and so would recover life." Close quote. Our Lord next said something which I think is very, very important. I think it's very applicable to us today, to souls that are encountered today. Quote, Many believe in me, but few believe in my love. And among those who do, too few rely on my mercy. Many know me as their God, but how few trust in me as their father. I will manifest myself, especially to those who are the objects of my predilection. I will show them through you that I ask nothing of them that they do not possess. But I do ask that all they have they should give me, for all is mine. I think these next words are quite important. If they possess nothing but miseries and weaknesses, these I desire. Even if they have only faults and sins, I desire them also. 
I beg them to give them to me. Give them to me, yes, give all to me and keep nothing, but trust my heart. I forgive you, I love you, I will sanctify you myself. Close quote. Our Lord said these things as a sort of prelude to the appeal. There's so much more he said. I'll mention a few more things. There's so much more he said. I do recommend that book, The Way of Divine Love, to see this message which our Lord desired to be promulgated. Our Lord asked Sister Josefa to give this appeal to the Bishop of Poitiers. That was where she lived in France um, in um, the 1920s. And he began the message to the Bishop, which is meant to go out to the whole world with these words. On 11 June 1923, quote, I am love. My heart can no longer contain its devouring flames. I love souls so dearly that I have sacrificed my life for them. It is this love that keeps me a prisoner in the tabernacle. For nearly 20 centuries I have dwelt there, night and day, veiled under species of bread and concealed in the small white host, bearing through love neglect, solitude, contempt, blasphemies, outrages, sacrileges. For love of souls, I instituted the sacrament of penance, that I might forgive them, not once or twice, but as often as they need to recover grace. There I wait for them, longing to wash away their sins, not in water, but in my blood. I am God, but a God of love. I am a father, but a father full of compassion and never harsh. My heart is infinitely holy, but also infinitely wise. And knowing human frailty and infirmity stoops to poor sinners with infinite mercy. I love those who after a first fall come to me for pardon. I love them still more when they beg pardon for their second sin. And should this happen again, I do not say a million times, but a million million times. I still love them and pardon them. And I will wash in my blood their last as fully as their first sin. Never shall I weary of repentant sinners, nor cease from hoping for their return. And the greater their distress, the greater my welcome. I think this part is quite important. Does not a father love a sick child with special affection? Are not his care and solicitude greater? So is the tenderness and compassion of my heart more abundant for sinners than for the just. Close quote. He is starving for love. He's love itself, and love demands a return. There has to be a commonality. We have to have that commonality, that common life. And the common life he offers us is his state of grace, total gift from God, but the state of grace in which he can dwell in us and be our friend. Think about that. God wants to be your friend. Do we ever ponder that? Jesus Christ shed his blood to show us how much he loves us. And he endures sacrilegious communions. He endures blasphemies. He endures neglect just for the chance to be with that soul in the state of grace that has that common life with him because he's humbled himself and come to our blessed Lord to receive our Lord's pardon. Our Lord is starving for love. He continued, quote, I want to forgive. I want to reign over souls and pardon all nations. I want to rule souls, nations, the whole world. I am wisdom and beatitude. I am love and mercy. I am peace. I shall reign. I will shower my mercies on the world to wipe out its ingratitude. To make reparation for crimes, I will choose victims who will obtain pardon, not by their own merits per se, but by the fact that they're in the state of grace. If anyone doubts that, take a look at John 14, 15. Our blessed Lord says, the things that I do, if any man love me, the things that I do, these things also he shall do, and greater besides. 
we're in the state of grace, it's Christ dwelling in us which is actually doing those good works. To make reparation for crimes, I will choose victims who will obtain pardon. For there are in the world many whose desire is to please me. And there are, moreover, generous souls who will sacrifice everything they possess, that I may use them according to my will and good pleasure. Just think of those sisters out there who live in solitude, away from their family, away from their friends, voluntarily, so that they can pray for us. Do you think they're having fun back there in the convent? It's a suffering. Yes, they're joyful. They are actually the most joyful women you'll meet. Cloistered sisters are probably the most joyful. They are certainly the most joyful women I have ever met. And there's no offense to any of the very good ladies here. But they are, cloistered sisters are the most joyful women I have ever met. Because they embrace the cross. They've left all to follow Christ. And they are imitating him in his life of prayer for us, just as he did spending nights upon the mountaintop praying for us. So these sisters have that vocation to bring us to him through their prayers. Our Lord continued, My appeal is addressed to all. To each I come to say, If you seek happiness, you will find it in me. If riches, I am infinite wealth. If you desire peace, in me alone is peace to be found. I am mercy and love, and I must be sovereign king. I am your God and your Father, your Creator and your Savior. You are my creatures, my sons, brought at the, bought at the price of my life and heart's blood, which I shed f to free you from slavery and the tyranny of sin. This part, I think, is very important and really applies to our time today, our pleasure-seeking world today. Quote, You have souls great and immortal, destined for eternal happiness, wills capable of all good, hearts made both to give and receive affection. All you whose craving for affection is unsatisfied, remember that you were made to love that which is eternal, not that which passes with time." Close quote. Our Lord once gave the secret of how he chooses for souls to come to know him, how souls will come to love him. As the new Adam, which is what 1 Corinthians 15 says he is, as the new Adam, he is our new spiritual father, the father of a new spiritual race. He is our father and we are his children. He suffered so that we would know the depths of his love. And like father, like son, we also have to suffer in order to know the depths of his love. It's a mystery. The world don't, doesn't understand it and won't understand it. But if we embrace the cross, we will. Our Lord told Sister Josefa, Suffer with me, that the world may know me and that souls may come to me. It is by suffering that love will triumph. Close quote. Just think of the suffering of the cross, how that brought about the triumph. I am all love. Many believe in me, but few believe in my love. And among those who do, too few rely on my mercy. Many know me as their God, but how few trust in me as their Father. He is all love. Believe in his love. Believe in his mercy. And trust him as your Father. May our Lady the Rosary pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.